okay so i'm back and this is the worked example to support the earlier video which outlined my objections to the proposed amendments to the public procurement and disposal of public property act we talked about government to government arrangements and the other area that is it looks to me that it's the government is trying to have exempted is public private partnerships and i think it's important that viewers understand what those are about so it's lucky for us that last week dr rowley and the minister of health and the minister for the, the mp for the area stuart young turned the sod at the ministry of health new headquarters building on queen's park east in port of spain on the corner with jerningham avenue where that lovely colonial gingerbread house that used to house paho was demolished a few weeks ago and that contract was described as a public-private partnership using the same sort of language I talked about in the previous video, that it was a financing arrangement and NHIC, which is um, Emily Elias' contracting company, had been successful in getting the contract. And today's business, today's Express Business, had a really interesting article at page 6 today's Wednesday, the 2nd of December 2020 had a really interesting article at page six that gave in important details, not all the details, but important details enough for us to construct a back of the envelope analysis of what the numbers mean. Not just the, mean, the numbers, but the meaning of the numbers. So let's start. First of all, we were told that this new project would save the state $10 million in rent a year because that is the amount of rent the Ministry of Health pays for its main offices. So $10 million a month, a year, would be saved. And it's important to look at the numbers, because in that same article, they told us that Republic Bank Limited had lent NHIC, the contractor, $280 million at 6% interest for 15 years to build the project. Now, 6% interest of 15 years on $280 million adds up to $532 million that Elias and his company would have to pay back to Republic Bank. Now, we don't have any of the details of the financing. It could be a reducing balance. We don't know those details. But it's $532 million would have to be repaid on simple interest, straight line. $532 million divided by 15 years, because it's a 15-year period that the building would actually be occupied by the ministry, paying a rent to NHIC, at the end of which the ministry takes ownership of the building, which is built on public land. $532 million divided by 15 gives us a figure of $35.5 million a year. $35.5 million a year gives us a monthly figure of about $3 million in rent. Somewhere in that article, they tell us that, in fact, the building area is 237,591 square feet. I don't know if that is gross or net. We don't have those sorts of details. It wasn't that kind of article. But that works out about $12.44 a square foot. Now, you might tell yourself that's not bad going government is getting a brand new office building for $12.40 a square foot. That's not bad going. But there's some important things to bear in mind. Number one is, as usual, the cost of the land, the value of the land has not formed part of the discourse. Number two, the service charges and maintenance of the building. We don't know what, is, what are those costs going to be over the years and who is going to bear them. My own guess is that it will be the state will have to bear those costs. And thirdly, of course, the question of a contractor's profit. What is the contractor's profit? Because the calculation I've given you all here on the sheet is really just an outline that takes account purely of your reported financial arrangement. It doesn't take account of contractor's profit. There are also other important questions to be, to be discussed in this matter, such as what is the reason for the building in the first place, given that there are so many empty offices in Port of Spain and rents are falling are there provisions in that 15 years, for example, that if rents fall in the next three to four years, the government's rental obligation on that building will also fall correspondingly? Or are we stuck in a place with our feet nailed to the floor that we will pay that same rent for 15 years irregardless of what happens? In other words, 
to put it in risk management terms on which side of the balance sheet, on which side of the commercial arrangement is the risk distributed. Exactly how much risk is the contractor taking? How much risk is the state taking? In a declining market, I dare say that as a fixed rent clause or an or a upward only rent clause is detrimental to the public interest. And then, of course, there's the question about fluctuations within the contract. If things go wrong within the construction process, who bears the cost and expense for that? So we have questions of viability. We have questions of necessity. We have questions of, do we actually save $10 million a year if the new rent is $35 million a year? You see? But we have been told at the same time that the, um, the pyramid or the SUSO or whatever you call it, the DSS, that those, those are smart men. And the, um, the arithmetic is, is tricky. But it's tricky right around there. Eh? You know it's Christmas time in Trinidad and Tobago when you're hearing um, the sparanderos are singing, lie, 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 and the crowd is going, sigh, sigh, sigh. Thank you.